bar. I have a little different way that I do it from the way the instructions do it because I don't like busting my foundation. Uh, some people argue about the number of nails that you put in it. You'll see what these nails are for in a minute. I like to put five. I kind of I kind of overkill things. I kind of go to the philosophy that if a gallon of grease good works good, a hundred gallons will work a hundred times as good. I've got some finished frames here in a hive in a whole hive body that I got sitting under my little workbench here. I'm gonna lay this guy aside now because he's all done. Here's the top bar. This is where that piece came from. Okay, these are my end bars. I use eyelets for my wires. Uh, these are available from the beekeeping supply companies. And there's a little eyelet tool that costs about $3. It's well worth it because these things are fiddly to put in. The eyelet goes on the end, goes over the hole. Where this is going at is on the ends of these end bars. There's some pre drilled holes, and this is where the eyelets are going. And when you consider there's 10 frames in a hive body, three to five to six hive bodies in a hive, you'll get an appreciation for how many times you're going to be doing this. And these slide in the pieces that they're fitted to go in. Let's see if I can do this up in here. And they're already, they lock in pretty good. And make sure that your eyelet's on the outside because sometimes I put them together wrong. This is a grooved bottom bar, a solid groove bottom bar. They, they make them split. There's all different types. I like this kind because they don't bend on you. They don't fall apart after a while. And this has its little slot that it fits down in. And there's the beginning of our frame already pre-assembled. Uh, some, some suppliers give you the nails, some don't. Uh, these frames frame, take two. These frames came from a company called Walter T. Kelly, and they they give you the nails with the frames, which is a nice inconvenience, a nice convenience rather than trying to chase these nails down. Lowe's has them, but it's it's nice to get ones with it. Uh, some people just put one nail in here. I like to put four, one on each corner. Again, I'm I'm kind of overkill. One thing that's really aggravating, you go to pull a frame out of a hive, and the frame pulls apart on you. That doesn't make your day. You're there fiddling, trying to get it apart, and you've got a bunch of bees swarming around you, and it doesn't make your day. The top, I put four nails in that again, and this moves along pretty fast. Once you've done a few of them, you can pick up a little speed. Uh, there's some people that like to glue these. I don't like to glue them for the reason is if I break something, if they're glued, I can take them apart and repair them. And once they're glued, they're glued. They're not going to do nothing else. Here's my fourth nail. I like to have a nice solid surface while I'm working on it. It acts kind of like an anvil. This is a nice, just thick old hunk of plywood. Uh, if I need to make a high cover or a high bottom, it, that piece of plywood could wind up there. There's two little nails here that are kind of important. And I don't know what these are called. I call them pin nails because they kind of pin this end in. fingers numerous times doing this. And that 
that, that, at that point, we've got a frame, we've got our top nails. What this nail does is it goes in through here and it goes into the top bar and it helps hold it together like that. Just makes them more solid. More solid. My next two nails that go in are going to be for my frame wires. And there's a lot of different ways to do these. This is just my particular way of doing it. I put these two nails in here, but they're not they're not seated all the way down. And now this frame's ready to be wired. Uh, this is frame wire. Don't ask me what gauge it is. It's frame wire. They sell it in the V catalogs. The most economical way is, are the are the spools. And I think I think they sell a three pound one. What's the gauge of that wire? <laughs> <laughs> it's B wire gauge. Oh, okay. Uh, one thing you don't want to do is let this go because it'll and it'll turn into a big ball. Yes, and then it tangles up and it doesn't make your day good. start by going in my first eyelet. Come on, coffee. I've had too much coffee. Now, now you know why I don't, why later on, how I, why I put my foundation in the way I do. And I'm coming back here the other way. up and I'll show you what I did. I'm going around my nail and I found three turns seems to work the best. Now I'll take that nail and this is where I'll pound it in and I want to go just a little below the surface so when I'm working with my hive tool later on it doesn't short snag on there. My little piece I just bend it back and forth and it breaks off. Come on, break off. Don't throw those on the floor. You'll step on them and you'll find them. So here's what I've done. I pulled my wire through. I've come back through. I've wrapped it around in the nail head. And then I pounded the nail head down. And now the first end of the wire is held. Now, take my roll. Give it a little turn. I'll push down on this one. And you see that bottom one tighten up. got my roll here for a handle. I'll put a little tension on there, pull this up, and you could do this any way that's just, I've gotten good with my fingers for this one. Set my nail down in there, and then no wire cutters, just bend it back and forth, breaks off. back in my roll before it gets away. And at this point now we have a frame that's wired. And 